Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and a new edition of our online interview series. We want to get an update from Whistler Silver, and we have Michael Connor here, the CEO. Good morning, actually, to Mexico, because you are on the site, right? That's right. I'm at the project today right now, and it's uh, good to see you, Jochen. Yeah, good to see you. Happy New Year, by the way. Just forgot that. <laughs> and I must say the year for you has started extremely well. And also I want to disclose that upfront, I'm a shareholder in the company, of course, uh, because such a good silver company, you have to own in your deposit. Um, but really, again, congratulations, not only to the year 2024, but to your start, because you increased substantially, um, first of all, your resource, but also your grades in the indicated category here to 551 gram silver equivalent per ton i think that's a huge milestone isn't it well yes and uh you know it's the rarest of things when you increase the resource you actually increase the resource grade and uh you know that is a very good sign that we're dealing with a tier one deposit here at panuco and we're absolutely thrilled about it Mm -hmm, definitely. So uh, there's a question which I got also from shareholders because they were asking me like, hey, that deposit or that that uh, that field must look like Swiss cheese because you did 822 drill holes with 303,000 meters. So when will you move then to the production decision? Because uh, everybody thinks like, hey, how many more holes do they want to drill? <laughs> Well, you know, that that's true. And I suppose that that one area looks like Swiss cheese, but that's only 10% of our cheese block, which is really exciting. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a very small amount of, of the overall project. Yeah. So, you know, the, the actual deposit that we've, uh, we've drilled off is, is such a small area, you know, compared to the overall district that we have. Mm -hmm. But you're right, you know, it is time for us to move forward into development. And I'm actually here at the project with uh, our new COO, uh, who's incoming, you know, there'll be some news about that shortly, but uh, mm -hmm. basically what we're doing is is moving the project from exploration, discovery, now towards production. And, uh, you know, we hope in 2027 to become one, one of the world's largest silver producers out of just this project alone. So very exciting time for Vizsla. Um, yes, you're right. The, the the resource we have drilled quite a bit at the resource. Um, you know, there's still a huge amount of upside even at the resource itself. Uh, mm -hmm. The district alone is 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 very underexplored. Mm, absolutely. No, I think uh, still even if you are in production, you can explore like unbelievable because as you said, it's only 10% of the project so far, one thing. But on the other thing that you also have the cash flow in the future uh, to really go even harder on it. And I can imagine that this will be something maybe you can produce the next 30, 40 years or whatever, because that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but it looks to me. Um, what I found really interesting also, if you, if I look at your uh, table for the resource summary, um, there is also a lot of lead and zinc. So how is that rated uh, value wise? And uh, in that sense, what, 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 what does it mean percentage wise from the value? Because I think it helps with, with uh, byproduct credits, right? Well, yes, it, it, it is a part of the byproduct, um, you know, mix here. But uh, however, this is really a precious metals district. It's silver mm -hmm. and it's gold. Uh, about five percent of the estimated value overall is is lead and zinc, and uh, we're considering, you know, creating a a, a, a dore out of the out of mm -hmm. the flow sheet here. So, you know, really, you have uh, as a shareholder of Beasley, you have exposure to silver, you have exposure to gold in large quantities, uh, you know, in silver, this is multiples of hundreds of millions of ounces alone, silver pure. Mm -hmm. uh, in gold, it's multiple uh, multiple million ounces of, of gold. So we're looking at a very rich, very large precious metals district here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so coming to a little bit more to the production, because this is the feedback what I get or what we get from our viewers also, um, is uh, how, let's say, complicated is it from the permitting side? Um, what challenges you might face or is it a straightforward process? Well, mining, of course, is a challenging industry when it comes to permitting. Uh, it's not getting easier anywhere in the world to be permitted to mine, uh, maybe Saudi Arabia is the exception, but 
uh, you know, in Mexico, we're fortunate because this is a underground mining district. For 450 years, they've been mining underground here at this district uh, on small scales in, in, in the case of Isla. Uh, but, you know, this is an area that many people are very familiar with, with mining. Uh, the families and the, the people that operate in this, these hills uh, are miners by background. So, you know, we've been very fortunate. A lot of our workforce comes from these communities. We have long-term production agreements with the communities that we operate in. Uh, we actually have permits for uh, a bulk test mine that we're operating here this year in 2024. So we've been very successful with permitting so far. And I expect as we transition into production, that will continue. Mm -hmm. But how long do you think will the process be? You said something like 2027, you will be in production. So that's, I would say, a good three years. Um, but what the, let's say, permitting process, production decision, do you think you can really full go in a full throttle this year already with that? Well, the biggest step towards that is going to be the PEA. And we expect to release a PEA around the midpoint of this year uh, in 2024. Uh, PEA or feasibility? A uh, PEA. PEA uh -huh. will be the first step towards that. And then from the PEA, another 18 months to feasibility, let's uh -huh. say, you know, broad strokes. So we expect that we can move very rapidly through the uh, the studies phase here as we debris the project through permitting and, and uh, development. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what would that cost approximately? And do you have the money? Because I think you're well cashed up, right? We are well cashed up. We're certainly funded for the PEA and uh, okay. milestones that, that are around, around that. But, uh, you know, going forward as we move into production, of course, the company will have to raise money at some point in the, in the distant future. Mm -hmm. Okay. A question to Mexico, because I heard it's getting a little bit uh, tougher, uh, let's say, for mining companies to get surface rights, mineral rights, etc., How is that in your case? As you said, you are in such a favorable old mining district. Yes, we've been very lucky that, uh, you know, the, the, the project itself is a brownfields district. That means that mm -hmm. it's been in production for many years uh, historically. And, uh, you know, we actually own a, a mill uh, in our district that we've uh, remediated and, 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 and um, taken down. But, you know, this is a producing mining district. Because of that, it allows us to move more rapidly into production in the future. Uh, as I say, you know, it's certainly not going to be easier anywhere in the world, but because of the characteristics of this project, the fact that we're right off of a highway, the fact that we have old mines on the project, I expect this will be a very straightforward and, and uh, really quite reasonable permitting process for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. As I've just surfed today uh, through the website of the Silver Institute, which is always interesting, and I saw the table of supply demand. And we are entering this year the sixth year in a silver, a real silver deficit. What's your personal view on the silver market? Well, I think silver, as Wiesla is, is criminally undervalued. Silver is so important to the electrification of the world. Um, silver is indispensable to solar panels, and we're seeing so much growth out of solar panels in silver mm -hmm. that's really driving that deficit. So, um, you know, as the world matures and continues towards this decarbonization path, silver will continue to be a very high demand metal. And that's nothing to speak of, you know, the monetary demands of, of silver as well. So you have both uh, the monetary side of silver, you have the electrification side of silver, And now this continues to be the, you know, an ongoing huge deficit. So mm -hmm. the silver price, I believe, will continue to rise. And I think it'll be well over $30 this coming year. Okay, super. That's a great final statement. I love to hear that. That's good. $32 is the breakout level in my chart, by the way. So and then we're going to have big party. That's good. Super. I will see you at, uh, yeah, hopefully then PDAC. And uh, that we see us uh, personally, that would be great. And uh, I wish you... Best, uh, of course, now on the project also. And if possible, please send us, uh, send us some good pictures. That would be great. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Super. Thank you very much, Michael. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, there was Michael Connor, the CEO of Visla Silver. You heard it. Michael is currently now in Mexico at site. And uh, I must say this resource estimate they brought out uh, some weeks ago was really outstanding. The company is now in the mode to really uh, switch gears and go on full throttle towards a production decision here, towards production. And as he said, PEA is the first thing and then go straight forward for the feasibility. 
facility within the next 18 months. That is great. By 2027, they hope to be in production as one of the largest silver producers then in the world. But please don't forget, it's silver gold but also lead and zinc which always helps with the cost and because you have nice byproduct credits that is good and uh, i think uh, they are in a wonderful jurisdiction 450 year old uh, mining district that's exactly where you want to be that makes permitting much much easier and uh I know why I'm a shareholder because that company is really undervalued. HC Wainwright just brought out a research and has uh, uh, has uh, risen the um, price target to US dollars 25. So we talk about a good four, four and a half Canadian dollars. And uh, honestly, that's also my minimum target here. So check it out. Make sure you get some Whistler silver. All the best. Thanks and bye-bye from Switzerland. Thank you.